So you started focusing, as you just said, on serving and um, and talking with senior citizens that were yep. at the point of where they need to sell their houses. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, what are your favorite marketing methods for locating the owners of these houses that may be looking to sell? Yeah, great question. So there's really two categories of marketing methods that we use. They're the ones that we used before we had a book. And then there's the ones that are more available to people who are experts, authorities, you know, celeb local celebrities. You obviously, you know, are in that category. And so what we did initially when we got the book was we basically just the same methods that we were using, you know, like there's no magic list. Like 20 years ago, it was the magic list that they only sell to three people. There's data is more available now than it's ever been. It's easier than it's ever been to find more ways than there's ever been for people to reach you. What's really missing in marketing is really understanding who you're talking to as a marketer and then sending messages that are like reading their minds. That's the biggest problem. Okay. It's not the list. Everybody has the same list. Everybody can, knows how to stack a list. You can go on YouTube, figure it out in five minutes. The real challenge is why would they choose you over everybody else? That's the missing piece. And so that's what we did is uh, we, I'll give you an example, real simple. Okay. We're getting calls from our direct mail, our door to door flyers, our normal, you know, calling agents and talking about, you know, if there's pocket listings, our normal stuff. So people are calling our office, right? We had just gotten the book and sometimes they're calling with a little bit of chip on their shoulder because they know that they're getting all this mail, you know? So they're like, Hey, you know, congratulations. You're going to win the house lottery. You have the opportunity to come over to my house and pay me more than you probably should. And so when people call, they're like, we need you to come over right now. And I was afraid that if I didn't go over there real quick, they'd sell it to somebody else. That's what they teach at all the boot camps. And that's probably true if you don't have a book, but if you do, you don't have to do that because instead I would just say, Hey, Oh, great. Great. Yeah. You want to come over. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll get to that. Hey, real quick. Do you have a copy of our latest book? And they're like, your, your book, your book, like the whole tone changes. I go, yeah. I said, you know, we wrote the book on senior housing. This is it right here. Um, home to home, the step-by-step -step senior housing guide. And I go in, in chapter three is all the ways to sell your home pros and cons of each. So let me ask you a question. If I sent you an autographed copy of the book um, to your house, we can you read chapter three before I come over? Because if you can, then I'll come over. And if you can't, then I can't come over. See, I'm the boss of my business. I'm the expert. You're calling and talking to the foundational source for the information that you need. So we're going to follow my process. It's not being rude. It's just a statement of fact. And so and it really increases compliance, which is what you want as a business owner, you, because you know the formula to help your clients better than they do. Otherwise, they'd be doing it themselves. And so they're like, uh, well, Jay, what do you think people are going to say when you ask them if they're going to read an autographed book? I mean, yeah. What do people say when they get your book autographed? They, they, they can't wait. So what happens is, is I pay a courier about 30 or 40 bucks. I send it over and I go, Hey, do you still like, do you need me to come over right now? Or are you going to foreclosure? Or we got like a couple days. And they're like, no, no, it's okay. A couple days. So now I'm on my schedule, which is what I need to run a predictable business. OK, I send the book, they read chapter three, but they read the rest of the chapter. Do you know what I mean? They, they read the story right here with me and my Momo. Do you think people think that guys who take care of their 90 year old grandmas are scumbags or loan sharks? Heck no. They're like, man, this is like my my new grandson, Max. So when I come over, you know, they've read the whole book. They've already spent four or five hours with me and they see me differently because I have a book, you know. So it just sets the tone really good. It puts the odds in my favor. Then when I come over, I bring them the workbook and they're just like, dang, it's like Christmas around here. And then I go through it with them. So instead of just talking about stuff or asking these lame, hard, you know, these hard closing questions that nobody likes and it makes you look really slimy, we don't have to do any of that stuff. Me and my students just like, so here's a perfect example, Jay, page 41. I, I tab this page. I go, now, uh, Mavis, if you're looking at some other investors to buy your house, I totally understand that. I'd probably do the same thing. But make sure that you ask them these questions. These are the questions you're going to want to ask 
to make sure you don't get roped in with the wrong person. And by the way, you can ask me those questions too. Do you see the credibility? Do you see the openness? It's like lights out. So that's how we buy houses and it works really good. We attach it to what we're already doing. But then the other stuff is uh, the stuff that we didn't even know about, which is speaking to local businesses. So one time I spoke at the probate attorney association monthly meeting for my county. Jay, do you think that probate, 30 probate attorneys in a room, they're sitting, you're standing, you're the expert, you're delivering. Do you think some of those 30 probate attorneys in the next two years are going to know somebody that needs to sell their house? Well, it's the perfect uh, market that is like the revolving door of right. pros prospects for your target market. Yeah. And so I used to think the only way to market for deals was directly to the, the homeowner with really standard generic messages that get thrown in the trash. So our messages used to be in the junk mail, but now our books are on the coffee table with all the other autographed books from the local real estate experts, which, you know, it's not a huge stack. So it's a, it's, it's about pivoting when you're, when you've established yourself as an authority, as an expert, as a local celebrity in your field, whatever it is, you know, it, it helps make the transition from, going from an annoying pest, as Dan Kennedy says, to a welcome guest. We used to be annoying pests. We were the pesky salesperson who was only pitching and not listening. But now we're the educator. We're the non-fiduciary housing advisor. That's just a big paradigm shift. And when you're in front of 30 business owners, there's an incredible amount of leverage because they know 30 prospects. So in one hour, you can really speak to 900 people. It's that's just super powerful. And I haven't found any other method of marketing that can replicate those kind of results. Mm -hmm.